Details define architectural designs. That's why I've spent the last four weeks going through and detailing everything from cabinetry to plumbing fixtures and incorporating it into my ultimate Archicad template. And better yet, for the first time, we get to use the brand new beast to talk about it all. So let's turn around to this screen and get started. Last time we left off with the laundry design and of course the kitchen design. We did a couple of details, but not really that much. So today I wanna to share with you all of my 2D details so far. We're gonna continue building on these. So in the view map, I've restructured this ever so slightly. You'll see under resources, cabinetry, 2D details, and I've broken it down into multiple sections. Let's work our way from the bottom up. We have a stone basin with a pop-up waste. And if I zoom in, you'll see our stone basin has a perfect sectional detail, showcasing the timber support structure, the front facing drawer, the bottle trap, and of course, the tap itself. Now, if that wasn't enough, I've also detailed the front sectional view of this to really give you some more information of what this sink should look like. In this sectional view, you can see the steel support structures underneath to be able to actually facilitate a floating vanity if that is the design intent. Now, obviously stone structures are quite heavy, so hence the steel supporting members. I've created the same for a stone basin with a soap shelf. You'll see on the left that it's relatively similar to our stone basin here, except instead of having our tap on the back wall, it is now on the side of the vanity. And if we're looking at it from a front on view, we have that tap on the side of the vanity and just behind we have a recessed soap holder. So you can put your beautiful ASOP soaps in the background. Now stop with the details here for a second to point out the fact that this computer is quieter than the rain outside. So I apologize for you hearing some background noise. Anyway, moving on, we have our stone basin. So the most generic basic stone basin that you're gonna use with a removable tray. Now we use the removable tray as a way to conceal and hide the waste point itself. But in my experience, this does lead to a lot of cleaning maintenance and algae issues. So if you're gonna detail this, just make sure you're detailing it for somebody that's a meticulous cleaner. Alternatively, we have our ceramic molded basin, which I've only done a single directional sectional view of. The ceramic molded basin is a lot easier and simpler and cleaner to use, to be honest, because it's ceramic. It's one piece, plug and play. I've left all of these items slightly generic without too many dimensions, so that when you find the items you're looking for specifically, you can just come in and tweak this information. Similarly, the undermount sink is relatively generic, but specific enough to be utilized in a construction detail documentation package. So what you notice is it's an undermount sink on a stone bench. Now I've detailed a 20 mil engineered stone top, it could be a 12 mil porcelain top, whatever you wanted, just adjust it. But what you'll see is the lips return underneath the routed timber supporting substructure. There are a couple ways to mount an undermount sink. I find that this is the most sturdy and yields the best results. However, your cabinet maker may not like this style. Often they do have clips to mount it as well, but the recess is just too deep and you have to then return your stone in as well and it just gets a little bit messy for my liking. Moving on to the cabinetry hardware detailing. There's a lot here, so I've tried to dumb it down. I'll jump in the middle here, team, to let you know that this Ultimate Arcad template is available through Patreon. I've been building it out for several months now, and every month I drop a new update. So if you're interested, feel free to check out the link in the description. I've added a preferred cabinetry handle and a preferred cabinetry hinge detail. So that way, when you drag and drop this onto your documentation, you're only gonna be highlighting one of these elements, maybe more for specific elements, but ideally just one. That way I didn't have to have five different handle details for you guys. I could just use what is here today. So I've done the basic finger pull, which is actually modeled in all of this cabinetry here. So if you look at the profile on the cabinet in the Arcad model, that is the finger pull detailed. Then we have an aluminum gap profile. So if you're looking for an aluminum gap profile to have a nice brass or a bronze or something up the top to create a breaking point in your cabinetry, you'd be looking at something like this. The beveled finger pull detail is our classic. It's also what you see in cabinetry from Ikea, for example. So the beveled finger pull is a relatively good option as well. The final two are of course our aluminum pull handles, which super self-explanatory, aluminum handle, concealed at the back, screw fixed, and a T-pull handle, again, bolted in at the rear. Now, the T-pull handle is the only one that won't align because the T-pull handle varies in size and depth. 
So whatever you're looking for, just adjust that when you end up specifying it and putting it into your construction package. I'll make a caveat blanket note here. All of these details are relatively generic. They're more or less in line with the Australian codes, but not necessarily to yours specifically. So be sure to check, update, and use them for your project. There's a couple overhead cabinetry details we have as well. So for instance, our overhead cabinet to ceiling. This one's dimensioned and detailed a little bit better because it's more important. I want this to be an 18 mil shadow line cornice detail that is matched to the actual face of the cabinetry. If I don't have these details, it doesn't happen. So that's why that detail is important. And of course, we've got our cabinetry finger pull detail with LED strip lighting. So if you have overhead cupboards and you want LED strip lighting at the rear, then you're going to be using this one. More often than not, I'm starting to use my LED strip lighting at the front now or even in the middle to illuminate most of the bench. However, it depends what kind of washing effect you're looking. At the rear, you're going to get a nice wall washer across your stone. In the middle, you're going to get a working light. So just think about what you need. What I'll point out here is when moving from Mac to Windows, ARCHICAD has a few glitches. So you'll see the text, for instance, isn't aligning where it needs to be. Literally, all you need to do is double click, click off it, and it will fix itself up. Alternatively, you can select it all, open up the settings, press enter, and it will fix itself up. It's just an issue with the label tool in ARCHICAD. It happens all the time, and I'm really hoping they fix it soon. I've added a few more into our base cabinetry detailing as well. So for instance, now we have a pullout bin base cabinet detail. Relatively simple and relatively self-explanatory. The bin that you're selecting is going to get installed behind the cabinet. The critical element here is the ventilation in the base of the cabinet. If you don't have any ventilation in the cabinet, every time you open and close that bin, you're going to get that waft of dirty, foul smell, which you don't want. Ideally, you have these spaces mechanically ventilated to push that air and smell outside, but it's not always possible. So we let it seep out slowly just down the bottom. Obviously, you're still looking at changing your bins very frequently, so that smell is incredibly mild. We're not talking about food scraps that have been there for months on end. That's just nasty, don't do that. We have our cabinetry base drawers detail, documenting the heights of the drawers and indicating to the cabinet maker how we'd like them to start and stop. My personal preference is of course using the Blum soft close hardware or the Legra box. Now there's a couple of different versions of the Legra box and in my opinion, they're awesome. And from my conversations with cabinet makers, they're about like for like, paying an Australian cabinet maker to build a drawer. So the Legra boxes come quickly assembled, end up being quite cost effective and premium. So hence why I've detailed them as my standard. Similarly to the drawers, we have shelves with the pre-drilled peg holes at the front and rear. Now, if you have exposed cabinetry, I've noted here where the doors are emitted, don't have those pre-drilled holes, make sure you get it perfectly set all of those shelves in the right levels because there's nothing worse than seeing holes in high-end cabinetry. Alternatively, you can also router out these holes and put LED strip lighting in. It just makes it look so much more premium for a fraction of the cost of trying to sort out all of this prior. Now, our ventilated kickboard is designed for our integrated appliances, such as our integrated fridges. I haven't gone ahead and drawn a fridge in because there's so many integrated versions, but every single one of them is going to need a ventilation grill. There's a couple ways to do it and it depends on the product. Obviously, the easiest way is an actual physical grill, the same things you see for air conditioning in the ceiling. But the nicer way to do it is to actually route out the cabinetry. So the cabinetry itself is perforated and routed to create its own grill. Now, this isn't suitable for every product. So read the manufacturer's detailing, hence why it's shown with an actual grill. But it is also noted that their option is there. Similarly, we have our standard kickboard detail here. The one thing I'll point out is the LED strip light at the bottom. A lot of people ask for LED strip lights at the bottom of cabinetry. I personally don't love it because it highlights all the dirt on our floors. So if you're opting for a high-end home, maybe just think about removing the LED strip lights on the floors. Last but not least, we'll work our way through the bench tops. Now we have relatively self-explanatory details here. Porcelain bench top that overhangs, showcasing how we want the malamine substrate underneath and how far we want the stone to return we can spend money going all the way in but we don't need to same with the quartz we're just showcasing 20 mil instead of 12. then we're showcasing our bench top thickenings so a stone 50 mil thickening you can adjust this to 100 200 300 whatever you want you can just adjust this detail relatively simply 
Next, we have our bench top to flush door detail and our quartz flush door detail. Again, identical details, just changing the stone on top. If you don't like the flush door and want the bevel pull, then you can just double click on this and the quartz to use them respectively. And because now we have our cabinetry hardware details with our preferred cabinetry handles, we can simply just go in, copy that finger pull, go to the quartz beveled, paste it in and replace that detail. All you have to do after is update a few little bits and pieces, change the name, and you've got exactly the detail you're looking for in a matter of seconds. So I'll undo that because that isn't the original detail we need and move on. Similarly to our 50 mil thickening, we've got our 100 mil thickening and then we have two final bits left. We have our preferred stone edge thickening detail. So similarly to the preferred cabinetry handle detail page, we have our stone edging. Now, generally this works for natural stone, engineered stone, it does not specifically work for porcelain because porcelain is a tile. You can't just go ahead and cut a lamb's tongue into a tile unless it's colored through and you're working with an exceptional stonemason. At least to my knowledge, with porcelain, you're looking at the pencil round and the iris as your only two options. Everything else here is available to all our selections in natural stone and engineered stone. So let's run through quickly. Iris, basically just chopping 45s at the corners. Pencil round, self-explanatory, let's round the corners. It's not sharp, they don't chip and you don't damage it. Bull nose, relatively old school, but still applicable if you're going laminate cabinetry. Bull nose half, again, not my preference, too old, but options are there nonetheless. The lamb's tongue is beautiful if you're working with natural marbles and are looking for one a little bit more of a sophisticated detail. This can come up absolutely stunning if done right, but you have to know what you're doing. The shark nose at the very end is one of my personal favorites. And if it was me, I'd either be going with the iris or the shark nose, depending on what kind of cabinetry style you're looking for. Now to finish off this ridiculous amount of time spent on detailing cabinetry and all sorts of bits and pieces, we're going to the hinge detailing. Now, this is just as important as everything else, because if you've got beautiful cabinetry and then ugly hinges, you got a problem. So I'll run through these relatively quickly. We have our closed position and our open position in all of them. The knife hinge, all you're gonna see is this small little barrel at the front and it's relatively neat. Unlike the barrel hinge itself, which you will see quite a bit of hardware. The surface mounted hinge is a little old school, but if you're looking for something rustic, something a bit more rugged, then you might be going for a surface mounted hinge. But hinges are very traditional in Australia for your standard doors. So if you're hanging a passage door, a bedroom door, you're probably gonna use a butt hinge of some sort. The wraparound hinge becomes useful if you need a 180 degree turn, whereas the cabinet hinge is very typical, again, here in Australia, of what you'd see in kitchen cabinetry. The final two are a little bit more expensive. We have our pocket hinge sliding rail system, which is basically a cabinet hinge opens the door, it sits on a rail, it slides into a pocket, and then that door is flush. Think Blum, Revago, or something similar. That's what this pocket system is designed to be. And finally, to conclude all of these details for this month's Ultimate Archicad template release, we have the concealed hinge, which is invisible from the inside and the outside. The only time you can see it is when the door is open and you're looking at the gap. Anyway, that is all for me, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. If you want to grab a copy of the Ultimate Archicad template, it's in the description, as is this beast. So if you're looking for a brand new computer, that's down there as well. But anyway, that is all for me. So like always, I'll see you next week.